I thought this video might be helpful for those who are trying to understand how a hip roof is constructed. I won't be providing you with all of the details on how to build it, but uh, give you an idea of how it's actually designed. So you can see the roof sheathing here. We use four by eight sheets and then the corners will need to be mitered. And in some cases you're going to need to, you won't be able to cut them flat. The steeper the pitch, the you might actually need to cut some type of an angle on the plywood. Um, for example, you have a, a square cut on this side, square cut on this side, and on this side. But this one might actually need to be angled a few degrees to make it work. And I've noticed that with the steeper pitches uh, for sure. So this is a hip roof with roof sheathing. Here's what it would look like without the sheathing. And of course, the star of the show is the hip. And the hip is usually going to be a larger board. If you have 2x10 rafters, you might have a 2x12 or even a 6x14. I remember one job we did, I think it had about a 32 foot glue lamb. It was a large, uh, large hip. I didn't like the way the bottom connected on the job we did, but that's another story. The blocks are usually going to be angled here and angled. You'll have an angle coming down, and then, of course, it will be mitered. The rafters, not uncommon to have rafters. We used to refer to these as flyers. And uh, you got to keep going two foot on center. You don't want to leave these out here. Um, let's take a look at the hip, the base of the hip. It's usually going to be a little longer. Zoom in here. This is going to be a little longer than the common rafter or the jack rafter um, seat cut also. Go up to the top, the hips usually connect to common rafters. You have your roof ridge, and then actually this is a common rafter, this is a common rafter, and this is the same rafter, believe it or not. This is actually how you can find the um, point here is with the common rafter, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that later, how to actually build this thing. So hip, hip, common rafter, let me do that again. Uh, common rafter, hip, common rafter, hip, jack rafter, common rafter again, and the roof ridge. Another view of it there. The jack rafter again is going to be mitered. And this is usually the same um, cut as the pitch. If we have a 6 and 12, this would actually be a 6 and 12 cut with a 45 degree angle. There's what the seat cut looks like again, fascia. Zoom out here, another view of it. Let's talk about the ceiling joist. The ceiling joist here are 16 inches on center. The rafters are spaced two foot on center. Every four foot, we are going to need to connect this, the ceiling joist, make a connection with the other side. So. Four foot, let's just pretend like this is uh, zero inches, and then 16 inches, two foot, 32 inches, and then 48 inches. So four foot would be every other rafter on two foot on center, and every third rafter 16 inches on center. And again, these need to connect. These are basically holding the building together. They will need to lap at the, I don't, they, don't, they don't have to, this is just one way of doing it. I like doing it like this, gives it a nice solid connection, a nice tie across. And then let's look at the other side. Now the one thing is, you do the math on this, these rafters are not going to line up. You're going to have to put some type of a spacer block, whether it's at the rafter and the ceiling joist at one end as I have it drawn here, or in the center where the wall laps. Either way, um, in order to have this work out and have your rafters line up. Now you can do this. You can move the ceiling joist and then move the rafters over, but then you have a problem tying the rafters together at the top with collar ties and or straps, whatever you need. So this, this right here is just kind of another way to do it. A block here and a block here. Back over to here, it's not going to be uncommon to have regular ceiling joists. I believe these are two by eights. 
And I think you can see here where it drops down a little bit. As you get closer to the hip or you get closer to the wall on this side, um, you might need to make smaller um, joist. You might even need to, might even be able to, or just only be able to get away with using two by fours in some cases. So keep that in mind when you're building. Usually this is how we finish the corners with some flat blocks. Let them overhang about an inch and a half. And then that'll be for your drywall backing. And they simply nail on top of the wall um, framing plate. I wanted to give you one last final look at the roof without the walls and the ceiling joist, give you an idea of how it gets put together. Common roof rafters here, roof ridge here, our hips are right here, hips. We have four hips, four corners, one for each corner, and then our fill rafters or our jack rafters over here with another common rafter in the center. And of course, our blocks. Closer view of it. Another view. It's nice to have your jack rafters all line up too, and it's easier to cut them because they're all going to be the same size. So if everything works out yeah, and you, you, your roof looks like this, you'll have done a pretty good job. Another view of it there, the hip. Remember, sometimes I said the hips are going to, and I'm seeing a lot of that nowadays. Uh, the older homes that uh, we used to work on when I first got started would have a single um, hip, be like a, a two by 10 if these were two by eights, and that was fine, but they sag and too much weight. If you can brace them, um, fine, but you'll see even if you look at this house here that there are a couple of walls where you could actually put a brace underneath the hip to a wall, but uh, I believe over here there might even be a garage. You're not going to be able to do that. And on the other side, I think, is a large room, so not always going to work out. That's why they require larger, larger um, materials for the hip. So that is it for the video, and uh, hope it helps, and it is off to the next one.